I gathered seven of the best Nuzlockers in the world to challenge to a race to beat the hardest part of Emerald Kaizo, Magma Hideout. The place where dreams are crushed and blood is shed. The goal is simple, first to beat Maxi wins. Before then we have 16 grunts with a ton of hacks items and explosions. But you had to survive with hardcore rules. Meaning if a Pokemon died, you can no longer use it and we had a level cap of 70. All these participants have been Emerald Kaizo. Well, most of them. Okay, he triple defense dropped me? Oh, oh, I'm out of recovers. Oh, that's not good. Why, wait, how did I run out of recovers? So we go into Dusclops here? Oh, yeah. Okay, now I've lost. Everyone also has accomplishments of their own, like making an 84-page doc guide to BDK, being the lead balance tester for Radical Red, and beating Radical Red hardcore mode with zero deaths. These guys are the real deal. To determine what Pokemon we would use in this race, we had a snake-like draft to pick from all available encounters in the game, minus some legendaries and broken encounters. Each Pokemon we pick also has random IVs and natures, though we could pick the abilities. For success in Magma Hideout, you want fast fire types to utilize sun with stab fire moves, fast grass types often with chlorophyll, a ghost type for taking explosions, intimidate Pokemon to lower attack which often pairs well with battle armor Pokemon who can play around crits. Steel types, ground types, flying types, or Pokemon with levitate, and water types are also very valuable. With the first pick of the draft, Burrito took Dragonite. This is all me, bro. That's what I'm talking about. No, this is this is me. This Watch is me. this. It's called the Goat Diff right here. Easy. All right, I'm picking Dragonite. It gets thick fat, and this beats just about all fire types. It's also able to switch into all fire moves and grass moves as you times four resist both. Manat takes Salamence with the next pick, who has a great typing, good offensive moves, and Intimidate. Aubrey takes Snorlax, who gets Thick Fat, and it beats just about every special attacker. Dexa takes Tyrantar, who has great stats, good typing, and Intimidate. Runin takes Exeggutor, just about the best Chlorophyll mod with great moves and 120 base power grass move and Egg Bomb. Joe takes Flygon, who is the best ground type, it's fast and has fantastic typing. Symes takes Houndoom, who has Intimidate and crazy buffs. My pick was last and I took Intimidate Arcanine and Regirock, who beats most physical attackers and has buffed attack in this game. The rest of the draft goes through with mainly Ghost types, Intimidators, Grass types, and Battle Armor Pokemon getting picked first. Then we try to fill holes in our team and find stuff that synergizes well. Everyone was able to get one Intimidator. We also had the opportunity to get something with battle armor. There was a bunch of fire types, everyone had an electric type, everyone had some grass types, and there was a lot of ground types, and Pokemon that were good for Maxi too. Overall, these drafts were good enough to make it all the way. It was all about how fast and strategic we did it. After the draft, we all picked up our Pokemon, put in the moves and abilities we desired, and headed to the first trainer. The Bright Powder Donphan was especially tough with other threatening Pokemon. Burrito got there first, being able to one-shot Smeargle and Ninetales. Then went Cacturn to kill Donphan with Magical Leaf that hits through Bright Powder. Then Dragonite walled Ninetales. Everyone else passed through the first trainer easily. Notably, Aubrey pre-status Snorlax, Dexa utilized Milk Drink Milk Tank to stall Overheat Recoil, and Syme showed the power of Chlorophyll Tangela. And he utilized Houndoom. Pretty easy start. Grunt 2, however, was a lot harder. It has what's known as Risky AI, which makes Explosion much more likely and current moves easier for the AI to use. Risky AI fights will take more time to plan and often a riskier playstyle. Quick Claw Camerupt only has few counters. Manetric often requires a ground type. Burrito got to this trainer first, having a pretty safe Gengar kill with Dusclops, and he had Marsh Tomp Vaultings for the Manetric. Camerupt was next and he decided to play Risky with his Pelipper. Okay, Carrot was free. Good shit, Pelipper. No QC boom. Easy. Manak got there next. Never does. Okay. Yeah, slacking just crush claw kills. Oh shit. I didn't even think about the loaf. Um, I still live though. Yeah. Oh shoo! Camera up! What? So I can do this. 
I think I take it. I think I take it. Come on. Yes! Ronnie got there next using Registeel for Gengar, then Camrupt got a little scary. Easy. Then he went Gator on Solar Beam, but luckily he dodges a deadly Quick Claw. I'm gonna go. And then he has Swampert for Manetric. I elected to risk my Vaporeon to Camrupt. But I can't risk anything else. Okay, nice. Beautiful. And then now we outspeed. If he gets the Quick Claw, it's just an L. Beautiful. Awesome, 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 awesome. And Battle Armor Fortress helped me out. Aubrey used Haunter for Gengar, and swapped between Firo and Haunter until Shift Tree exploded. There we go, let's go. Then she accidentally risked a crit on Blastoise from Lantern Pivoting. Wait, what? Oh, I forgot, I didn't- mm, I'm dumb. Yeah, it didn't confirm uh, Volt Absorb yet. But she got through just fine, until she had to pivot Haunter and Lax on camera. It didn't explode, so Lax got low, and had to risk Sceptile. Alright, this sucks, but I think I just have to go Sceptile and hit the outspeed. I've played to my outs as best as I can. Comes down to a 1 in 5. <laughs> go! But let's turn to Joe, who killed the first three, including Camrupt, easily, but then struggled against Soul Rock. Oh my god. I'm literally too good at this game. Yo, wait! Soul Rock came in?! Yo, that's so good! Oh shit! See, I think Flygon just stays in and pops off. God damn, bro, that's so much time waste. This ain't it. <laughs> that was a terrible loss. Gyarados was his second overall pick and an important Intimidate user. He also lost Swallow to Shift Tree. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Dexa got through it easily with Spore Breloom and only risking his Golduck. I had nothing for this camera, but my plan was bad. Easy. Symes used Cradilly for Gengar, but mistakenly went to shove it on a Solar Beam, losing his only Ghost type. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's a good chance of Booms here. Just don't Solar Beam me. Oh, fuck me. That's really bad. That's so bad. I just die? Oh, I wasted that. I think I actually have to risk it. Oh, got quick blood. The third grunt wasn't too bad. Burrito again was in the lead and beat it easily. I got there next utilizing Fortress and nobody had any struggles here. Grunt 4, however, was a lot harder. Bright Powder Victory Bell was a monster. Chlorophyll meant it outsped almost everything. Belly Drum Bright Powder Charizard is also really tough, with only Shockwave Electric types only being a relatively safe way to beat it. And there were other tough mods. Burrito yet again was in the lead, and funny enough, he used Marsh Tomp for Charizard. Show me why you're the GOAT. Show me why you're the GOAT, bruh. Okay, Heat Wave is unlucky. <sighs> we'll burn, nice. Show me why you're the GOAT! Come on! I missed. Okay, 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 okay. He had a Sagma Champ to kill with Shockwave Raichu. He also had a really good counter to Victor Bell and Shell Armor Torkoal, though it was Bright Powder. Come on. Yes! Easy! Obviously that was very risky, but we're trying to play fast. I got there next and forgot that Gramble had Intimidate, so I had to risk my him only. So yeah, I'm dead to crit here. Okay, thank god. Okay, nice. Alright, dead to Quick Claw here. Okay, nice, it didn't Quick Claw. Or fo wait, no, it has Focus Band. Okay, it didn't Focus Band. <laughs> we're good, we're good guys, we're good. Forgot about Intim, we're fine. Nothing to worry about. I had Muck for Victory Bell, which was a pretty good counter. Come on, just hit, just hit, just hit, just hit. Okay, got crit, that's fine, just hit. Beautiful! Okay, that's so good. That is so incredibly good. Miss, we got a hit with Sharpedo. If we miss both times, we probably wipe. Okay, there's Heat Wave. Dodge Crit. Beautiful. I got Bird. And I'm Lumber. Okay, beautiful. Now if we hit, we're fine. We miss. If we miss a Sharpedo, it's bad. Nice, okay. Aubrey got through the grunt easily, using Weather Ball Venusaur for Victor Bell and Shockwave Lantern. Super clean, but she took a long time to prep for that fight. 
Joe had a decent Charizard answer with Flygon. He didn't have a great answer for Victory Bell, so he decided to stay in. If I get crit and just give up. Okay. We hit. Burn, 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 burn. Oh my god, you hit that range? That's f***ing insane. Dexa had Skarmory out and clicked Fly as Claydol exploded, and then he came down to hit the Victory Bell. Then he used Dragonair to finish it off with Extreme Speed. Then had to play a little risky into Charizard. Okay, I died to some rolls of that. I just need damage on this. That's the first death. I don't even care. Okay, we hit through Bright Powder. Easy crits. That was a range to kill. Runin also didn't have a great answer to Victory Bell, so he had to go Gengar, dodge a Weather Ball crit, and hit Psychic through Bright Powder. Then he had an easy kill on Charizard with Battle Armor for Alligator. Manak got some Intimidates on Vic, and he used Typhlosion and Aerial Ace Ments to safely beat the Bright Powder Zard. Symes had a Crobat for Vic, but forgot he was slower. Wait, he's faster? What? Whoa. I think I just need to hit it. Fuck, Weather Ball? It's gonna do a lot. Okay, hit, 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 hit. Thank you. So far, Burrito had a commanding lead without playing too risky. Manat, Joe, and Runin were right behind, though they were playing a little risky, and everyone else was right behind. Nobody had trouble on Grunt 5, but Grunt 6 was a different story. Quick Claw Torkoal, Focus Band Aggron, Tail Glow Ampharos, and Bright Powder Sandslash gave some people issues. Burrito in the lead got through it quick, getting two kills with Laron, of all things. Easy. Easy! Laron is too crazy, bruh. Joe was next and missed a range with his Raticate and died to burn. Live? I'm dead to burn, bro. Then Bright Powder Sandslash became an issue. Anybody's paying attention in chat, get them big bears going. Oh, f dude, you actually got the random AP into boost? That's probably GG. Jump Bluff, this is why you're on the f squad, dude. If he. Double boosts, I deserve to lose. Okay, okay, that's one. Crit, 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 okay. Hit. Yes! Let's go, Jump Bluff! You're the GOAT, dude! Oh my god! But he also had to spend 10 minutes trying to kill the Jump Bluff with Leech Seed, Sleep Powder, Protect, and Substitute, which put him back a bit. Pain! This is pain! Manat got Parish Song by the lead Mischievous, but he sacked it to kill the Torkoal. Then on Jump Bluff, Manat forgot to teach Sludge Bomb to Meganium. He also forgot to go Lumberry. Kill this very quickly. That's all I ask of you. Oh! Okay? Let's go Meganium? Wake up, wake up, wake up, you got the berry? Uh, okay. my wall rain was Rain Dish and not Thick Fat. Can I change that? Nice! Yet he got two Strength Crits. Insanely bailed. Dexa and Symes beat the Grunt easily. Run and lived a crit boom with Arrow on 1 HP, though it was a max roll. Finally, I decided to risk my him only on the Quick Claw aggro. Here we go! Eat that up. Okay? Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get him. Get him, come on. So good, okay. I didn't have a great answer to Bright Powder Ampharos, so I had to risk my Nita Queen as well. Don't tail glow. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Sit. Nice hit. Nice hit. Nice hit. Come on. Come on. Unlucky. Ah, unlucky man. Oh, I actually live boom usually. Accuracy drop? Okay. I live boom usually. Come on. Nice. Okay. Alright. Um, what would be really nice here is muddy water accuracy drop into boom miss. That would be so funny. No, okay. Dead Blastoise. That's what it, that is what it is. Not a bad loss for both of us, but OBS had to spend a lot of time on the jump bluff. I might be able to just kill it now. I think I might just have Leech Seed left. It took so, so much time. Grunt 7's Gligar was really tough. It had Bright Powder and Sword Stance and Hyper Cutter, meaning it couldn't get intimidated. Quick Claw, Aggron, and Focus Band Shiftry were also really tough. Burrito's Claydol handled it well, though he lost Claydol to Quick Claw Golem. High roll? Okay. Okay, just 
boomed. All right, I lost my cloidal. That's fine. Not a big loss, though. But that's Ghastly couldn't get countered by Wob, but the Gligar got a little scary. Bulumar Gligar comes in here. I think it's Gligar. Yep, okay. SD, okay. Ice Beam? All right, hit, 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 hit! Yes! Then Joe's tentacle went crazy. Um, um, do I have a backup for the Gligar? Oh, no, I don't. Hit. Easy. Uh, always sees EQ. Oh, it sees the head smash kill, though, as well. So we need to click Muddy. That was Bright Powder and Quick Claw, by the way. Dexas Levitate, Lunatone matched up well against Gligar. These two attempts, if it doesn't crit, I mean, at least three if it doesn't crit, or two if it gets one crit, we just hit it. Run and use for Alligator. I use Glagly. Just hit. Nice. Aubrey used Kingdra. Nice. Don't crit. Don't crit. Yes. All right. So free. Then Sizes Haruyama almost died to Magmar. Nice. I think I I. I don't know if I live. I might die here. I live. Okay. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, I got burned. What happens first? Bury or burn? I don't know. Oh, Citrus, thank god. The burn's gonna do so much. But then Slowbro killed Gliger. Grunny was pretty easy with no crazy hacks items. Though Dexa accidentally hit Typhlosion into Blaze and got crit. Flinch. For the culture. Never. Oh my god, they put it in Blaze? It crit me in Blaze. I should have seen that coming. That's really bad. This is so bad, dude. You're insane! Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's insane. That was scope lens and I dodged two crits. Then we had a solar beam eye moment. Okay, Vileplume is here. Um, 68, right? It's a roll, not risking that. Might be a little bit slower this way, but it's fine. What? I'm so... What? How? How? Has anyone lost a Pokemon yet? I just lost my Scizor! Vile Plume in would be sick here, but I don't think I'm gonna get... What? Come on, live, 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 live! Let's go! Grunt 9 was crazy. Quick Law Artillery had good coverage, then Glalie and Ludicolo were tough. But it was the Bright Powder Charizard that was a huge threat. Burrito's Dragonite slammed the Artillery without having any risk, and then he had Torkoal for Charizard. Please hit Torkoal! My jump luff is one speed below it because I'm one Easy. Guy. Manat was in second, but he didn't have a good Zard answer. No way I gave uh, okay. Manette the Ments, bro! Oh. I can give Manette the Ments, alright? Loses Ments to Bright Powder Charizard. I don't really have plays, I just had to go Ments. Okay. Or er, Aerial Ace. Wait, I don't have Aerial Ace! Okay. Hit the Rock Slide. Come on, Ments! I forgot Aerial Ace. Okay. Hit this one, hit this one. I just don't get crit. Turn. Don't get crit, don't get crit, don't get crit. Yes! These two had a good lead over the rest. It really came down to how fast they prepped for the next fights. Joe only had to risk Bright Powder and Miss and a crit. We hit, doesn't matter, okay. Dexa had an easy fight and used Soul Rock for Charizard. Aubrey was able to have her Whisk Cash out. That's a crit, don't miss, don't miss. Yes! Unfortunately, due to long prep time, Dexa, Aubrey, and I were falling behind a bit. Look at that! Look at that damage! Yeah, uh, okay. Oh god. <laughs> Am I speaking too soon? Uh, it can Dragon Ants here though, which is really bad. I have to stay in. Okay. Okay. Thank god. Okay. The next run was pretty easy besides me forgetting that light screen was up. Alright. See ya. This is a modest 28 special to- did I get the wrong move? What? Oh no. What'd I click? Light screen! Oh, bro! 
that was a really bad loss. Nobody else struggled on this trainer. Grunt 11 had a couple tough Pokemon, like Armaldo, Quick Claw Gramble, and Venusaur. Burrito, yet again, got there first. So I can't even get burned. This shit. Oh, it's a crit. Easy. <laughs> Monad and Ronin's fast yet risky playstyle positioned them in second and third. Alright, I live. Just don't crit me. Just don't crit me. Just don't crit me. Just don't crit me. Let's go! Though catching Brito at this point looked tough. Joe's cast form got 5 total kills and he has been going at a much faster pace. Symes lost his aggro to Torkoal due to forgetting to bring a water move and Walrein not being thick fat. Oh, that's terrible. Here we go. It went for Sword Stance. Oh. Funny enough, I I only died a crit here. It's always Earthquake. AP boost in the crit never happens. Woo! Okay. <laughs> it's too easy, man. Grunt 12 really only has two issues. One being Bright Powder Executor, though its attacking moves aren't too good. Then you really have to be careful of the Wobbuffet. Okay, if it booms here, it's fine. Uh, yeah, Ghastly on HP Fight Slash Boom Slash SD. What? Risky AI, bro. Nice crit! Oh shit, dude. I think I'm losing my Mawile here. It's gonna counter eventually. Probably just first turn. Yeah. That sucks. Nice, SD. Okay. Don't miss. Wait, I'm slower. <laughs> R.I.P. the king. This could be a solar beam. Yep, Corsley is dead. I don't give a oh. oh, I just... Okay. Grunt 13 wasn't all that bad either, and nobody struggled with it. Except for me. Alright, let's go! Grunt so much something kind of... Wait. I brought for the wrong traitor! Oh no! Oh no 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 That's not good. Oh god. A bright powder egg, choice bag explosion cladle. Okay, yep, this is a. I live, don't create overeat. Good luck! Well that's awesome. Spit up drop. I got a play though. It is a terrible play. Don't crit. Okay. Dodge one more crit. Don't crit. Okay. Now we made guaranteed E speed. It's a Regirock. This is so bad. <laughs> Take the E speed. Okay. Wait, why did it do that? Oh, Solar Beam. Wait, yes, yeah, Solar Beam AI. <laughs> I was at a Solar Beam crit there. Grunt 14 was also pretty easy. Okay, big Charmeleon got it. Just get a range, please. Making my life easier. Oh, I mean, that's fine. We lose a Charmeleon here. Please, Typhlosion. Please, 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 please. Yes! That's really good. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. All right. Now it is guaranteed Solar Beam or Drill Run. We go to Fortress, and then we go to Arcanine. We're never dead a crit, and we kill the D-Speed. How'd that happen? Burrito beat the last five trainers extremely fast, and had a big lead going into Courtney, even though he lost two mons to the last grunt, and he risked a crit on his Dragonite. He was multiple trainers ahead, and had Courtney next. It's the boss fight right before Maxi. It's pretty easy to lead against the Zard, but Regirock can be terrifying, and Salamence and Venusaur can be especially tough. He led with Raichu to kill Zard, and went to Cactor to Sack to Explosion. Torkoal took care of the Venusaur, and he got Chip on Kangaskhan and killed with Dragonite. Then he sacked Raichu to Salamence and killed with Starmie. Last was cast form, so he went Lapras, took a Solar Beam, and he couldn't get crit because of Battle Armor. Then he got Drill Run Chip, sacked, and killed with Starmie. Last was Maxi. Usually in Emerald Kaizo, you want to save your White Herb for Elite Four, but in this challenge, we can use it now. This is especially good for the Elite Tyranitar. Executor was also really tough with Chlorophyll. 
Arcanine was a big issue as it has really good moves, and Entei is just about the hardest Pokemon in the game to beat. It has buff special attack, and its stab, sacred fire, along with solar beam, extreme speed, and ancient power makes it terrifying. He led clear body Metagross, got meteor mash damage, and lived a fire blast. He knocked it out, then on Gengar, he pivots Dragonite on Thunderbolt into Starmia on Ice Punch, and he kills with Psychic. Arcanine was next, so he sacked his Metagross and killed with Explosion Quillfish. He sends in Shift Tree to bait Flygon, going for Heat Wave. Then he goes to Starmia and kills with Ice Beam. Entei was next, so he sacked Starmie, goes to Torkoal to live Sacred Fire with Battle Armor, and explode to kill. Finally, it's Executor, so he goes Chlorophyll Shift Tree, and with one final explosion, he comes in first place. I told you I was winning, bro. I told you. This was winner's POV all along. That's how it's done. Big congrats. Let's analyze how he did it. With Burrito's first pick, he chose Dragonite which some people might be surprised about, especially with Pokemon like Salamence on the board. Because of Dragonite's typing and thick fat ability, it gave him easy matchups into many Pokemon. His Battle Armor Torkoal also had a lot of great matchups. Thus Clops also has insane stats in Arbold Kaizo, and Starmie and Metagross continue that offensive pressure he was able to have. Through the course of the draft, he spent by far the least amount of time needing to prep for trainers, and he played pretty safe relative to the other trainers. Next to finish was Manat. He had a pretty good Courtney, utilizing Dugtrio and booming his Cloister on Kangaskhan. Then he fought Maxi. Wait, hold up. I can I can show Egg what's good, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> nice crit. Yo, yo, yo. Can we get a quick... Can we get a quick Leaf Blade crit for the culture? Quick Leaf Blade crit for the culture. Let's go! Shomu's boss! Get as much chip damage as we can. Please don't boost, don't boost. Let's go! GG Maxi! Get farmed! Let's go! Oh man, second place, that feels good. He overall employed a much riskier playstyle, but it paid off. His draft was very offensive, and it worked to his playstyle. Ronan accidentally lost his Executor to the last grunt, and played the Venusaur on Courtney a little risky. Easy. I forgot to pre-sleep and then dodge a sleep powder. But he managed to get to Maxi, where Guts Zangoose killed Tyranitar, and Aerodactyl beat Arcanine, who was also able to kill Entei. But it was Gengar who got the final KO. I haven't touched a Pokemon game since whenever my last stream was, pretty much, so... Not bad. Something interesting about Runnin' and Brito's drafts is that they both took a ghost type early on, and they utilized them a lot during the hideout. It's always nice to get more use out of a ghost type than just being able to switch it on explosion. Runnin' plays slightly less riskier than Manat, and maybe even had a better team overall, but it's Manat's playstyle that gave him the edge. Joe had a pretty fun maxi fight. Reversal Primate killed Tyranitar. Hit him with the reversal! He's gone! Good night. Then Executor was next, and luckily didn't random move AP boost. Oh yeah, nope. Oh yeah, oh yeah we did. Yo, check this tech out though. Mmm. Give me that HP back, son! <laughs> I'm too nice with it. I'm too nice with it! Come on, come on, come on, live. Oh, oh I'm too nice! Is there anything I live? I don't think I live anything. Eat it up, eat it up. <laughs> I do like 22%. You gotta go for the crit though. You gotta go for the crit. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> oh my god! No shot! No f shot, bro! What on earth is this? Jeez, uh, y'all. Even though Joe lost his Gyarados, his second pick, he made a very impressive run to the finish. Dexo was next, and he had a pretty risky maxi fight. Dodge the range. I'm pretty sure we just wipe otherwise. Don't get the range. It's only 18% to kill me. Nice. Okay. Okay. Umphan is kind of a beast. I am so dumb. Why did I do that? I am so dumb. I'm literally never punished. Why did I 
Pretty slept with a fucking Lamberry, bro. But yeah, Porygon did work. Ah, <sighs> GG. Easiest maxi two of my life. Oh. We made it, guys. We made it! GG's! Oh, that feels good. Feels good to play this game again. But I'm not gonna play it again for a while, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Woohoo! Maxi defeated, baby. Okay, yeah. Finally! Seventh place, baby! Let's go! <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't wipe, man. I made a lot of just like stupid mistakes. I think the most miraculous thing about this is that none of us wiped. Granted, we drafted great boxes, but the fact that we were playing really fast and were able to manage a relative amount of risk on the fly was pretty impressive. Make sure to check out everyone who participated in the description. These guys are really talented and have great content. Again, big congrats to Burrito for winning. And if you guys want more events like this in the future, let me know in the comments. Also, I'll be going to TwitchCon for the next week, so if you're there, make sure to say hi. Anyways, thanks for watching.